Hello YouTube, how's everyone doing? It's Professional here. Welcome back to my playthrough of Apollo Justice, the Ace Attorney Trilogy. And on the last part, we finished Case 4, and it was a pretty crazy ending. Athena actually got accused of being the killer of killing Tehran. And uh, this is going to be the final case of Dual Destinies. We still got one more um, Ace Attorney game to play after this. But you guys told me that this case is going to mess with my head, and there's going to be even more twists in this one than the last one. Uh, so let's start this one. Let's do it. Let's see what's going on here. Uh, episode 5, Turnabout for Tomorrow, Investigation Day 1. And I already see on here, I see Miles Edgeworth on the right side. Um, I recognize him from the original Ace Attorney games that I played. Um, Edgeworth is actually my favorite character in the Ace Attorney series, so I can't wait to see him again. Okay, Investigation Day 1. Turn about for tomorrow. No one can escape their past. What the? The sins we've committed and the sadness we've caused. Also, um... Is that Blackwell? No matter how far we run, our past remains. As ever present as the moon in the sky. They lose in weight uh, for the day when we are forced to face it. But only in doing so can we truly make peace and move on and hope towards to hope tomorrow. Also about this case is you guys have told me in the comments this is the this case caused the game to get an M rating. So Dual Destinies is apparently the only Ace Attorney game that has an M rating, and apparently there's something really brutal in this case that um caused it to get an M rating. But I guess we'll see what that brutal thing is. Uh, write anything agency. Okay. They took Athena from uh, the courtroom straight to the station. She's probably being questioned um at this very moment. After this past year, I took it for granted that th those two would always be here. But now Apollo has gone off on his own to seek his own truth. And my pursuit of the truth only ended up with Athena becoming the new suspect. Some, uh, boss I turned out to be. It's even quieter in, in here than usual. So basically, Phoenix, Phoenix has lost both of his workers. He's lost, um, Athena who got arrested. And also Apollo, who refuses to talk to him and Athena. Uh, yeah. It seems so empty, too. I just don't get it, Daddy. All of your reasoning during the trial seemed perfectly solid. Yeah. And I still believe it was, at least based on what we know. But now, Athena is the one who's being accused. During the trial for the bombing and murder that occurred at the Cosmo Space Center. The lighter used by the real culprit was found. This lighter proved the defendant is Solomon Starbuck innocent. I'm starting to wonder if Star Star Starbuck actually had something to do with the murder or not. But Athena's prints were found on it instead. And she was subsequently arrested for the murder. 
But Athena couldn't have done it. It just doesn't make any sense. No, none of it does. I've been racking my brain, but I just can't figure it out. Ah, where is the flaw in my reasoning? What have I got wrong in this case? You know, Daddy, if Athena was here, she wouldn't just be uh, sitting around thinking. She'd be out there doing something. You are going to defend Athena, right, Daddy? Of course I will. And thanks, uh, Trucy. I needed that push. Yeah, so there, the music, there was no music whatsoever. Now it just came back. Phoenix kind of lost his confidence. Trucy's right. The trial's tomorrow. There's no time to waste. If I'm going to prove Athena's innocence, I'd better get out there and find some evidence. Off we go, then. We're on a hunt for evidence that'll prove Athena's innocence. Great. But before we go, I'd better tidy up the evidence I have on hand. Unnecessary evidence left at the office. Athena's probably still in the middle of being questioned. But well, Trucy's right. The thing to start with is talking to the people at the Space Center. Okay, let's go to the Space Center. Um... Uh, Entrance. December 20, um, Cosmo Space Center. Entrance. Oh, great. Um, Director Cosmos, do you have a minute? Eric. Galactic Scooter, full speed ahead. Yeah, after that, that he's not gonna talk to us. Director, he scooted away. Uh, his expression changed the instant he saw you, Daddy. Yeah, well, I dragged his name through the mud pretty good at the trial earlier today. Okay, uh, let's go to the boarding lounge. December 20, uh, Cosmos Space Center. Boarding lounge. We were here only yesterday. Oh, hey. Oh, Starbuck. Mr. Starbuck, you've been released, huh? Yup, and I came straight here. This is all thanks to you and your team, Mr. Wright. You've given me a second chance to fly into space again. I can't thank you enough. Except... Hang... W what's wrong? I thought he'd be happy to be acquitted. As I was coming out of the detention center, I saw Miss Sykes. He, he saw Athena. I was at a loss for words. I didn't know what to say to the poor girl. And then you know what? She flashed a peace sign at me. Congratulations on your acquittal, she said. Now you can go back into space someday. Yeah, that sounds like Athena. I could just picture it. But I saw her eyes. They were red and swollen from crying. She's gotta be suffering. She must be so worried. And yet she went out of her way to be nice and give me that big smile. She held back her own tears so she could give someone else a smile. I don't believe that Athena's a killer. There's no way. Um... Uh, that's so Athena. There's no question about it. That girl is innocent. Please, Mr. Wright. You have to make sure she goes free. And then they can put me in prison instead. I don't mind. We can't have that either, Mr. Starbuck. Don't worry, Mr. Starbuck. I'm going to give her the very best defense I can. I promise to get her acquitted. Just like I did for you. I know she'll be alright with you in her corner. I know you'll never give up, uh, give up on her. Apollo is a fine boss to look up to. About the murder. I still can't believe Launchpad 1 was switched with the Space Museum. What could have made Director Cosmos do such a thing? I haven't the foggiest idea. Hank. So there never was gonna be a launch that day. Not from the very beginning. I wonder if, if Clay knew. I imagine he must have. Surely he would have noticed when you went to board the rocket. It's pathetic to think I was the only one who got taken in. Hank. But I guess that's about how it goes. When you're worth less than space debris. Is he going to be alright, Daddy? His expression looks as dark as a black hole. Well, that's just how he is. The murderer. Mr. Starbuck, do you remember anything about the murderer? Not really. I only saw a shadowy figure in the dark a after all. Yeah, I guess that was a little too much to hope for. Hey, I heard something from the police, though. They said they never did a find a 10 caliber gun down that trash chute. Oh my god. Remember what I said on the last part? 
I literally said that this entire case could have been thrown out, that Starbuck was innocent if Phoenix had just brought up the gun. Like, why did Phoenix not bring up the gun in the first, like, trial? He could have just said that there was no gun found at the crime scene. Like, they were accusing Starbuck of having a gun, but yet there was no gun found at the crime scene. That's just, that's, that's, um... Damn, that's, uh, so he was accused of shooting at Detective Arm, but there was no gun found. This is I thought. The culprit must have carried it away with them when they escaped. So, was the person you saw holding a gun Mr. Starbuck? Um, I couldn't really tell. But it wasn't Athena, right? Uh, could you tell if the person was a male or female, tall or short? I, I can't even tell you that much. Man, I'm useless. When the culprit opened the door and some light came in, I should have been able to see. The door. Ah, yes. As I recall, they opened this door here as they made their escape. The door to Launchpad 1, right? Yeah, except right now, the door leads to the Space Museum. You mean the Launchpad and the Space Museum are switched right now? Yeah, they're trying to investigate the theory you came up with in court. So they're recreating the conditions, huh? I'd like to see what's beyond that door now. Mr. Starbuck, could you open this door for us? Sure, just let me have my prints scanned here. Switching the launch pads. Do the launch pads get switched back and forth a lot? Well, back when the Space Museum was launch pad 2, they used to switch the pads around at times. But these days, launch pad 2 is only used as a tourist attraction, right? Right. Because, quite frankly, the Space Center needs to the money. I hear you. Times sure are tough. Daddy, let's go check out what's beyond that door. Sure, let's go. Hey, why don't I come along? I can show you around. I don't know if I trust Starbuck completely, though, because um, Starbuck might pull a Matthew Ungard, if anybody knows who Matthew Ungard is from the original Ace Attorney games. He seems like a very friendly guy, but he's um, a, a really evil person, so I hope that Starbuck isn't like that. Huh? I wonder what these dead leaves are doing here. Maybe they were stuck to the bottom of somebody's shoes. There are uh, lots of trees around the Space Center. He's right. It's a modern state-of-the-art building, but it's surrounded by trees. Yeah, um... Uh, the thing about this is you would not have a, um, a, a forest right next to a, uh, a space launch pad. That would not be the case. You, you would have to have as much clear clearing as possible because imagine if that rocket fuel ignites the grass or ignites the, the, the woods. It's going to cause a giant fire. So that's just already unrealistic as you're not going to have a, a giant like forest right next to a space center. But I don't know. If they were stuck to the bottom of somebody's shoes... Wouldn't they look more crushed up? These don't look like they've been st stepped on. Maybe there's some kind of secret hatch in the corridor. They probably went out the window. That's probably what happened. And they came in that way. Not everything is set up like a magic magician stage, you know? So this is another one of those devices for opening the door, huh? Yup, but this one doesn't require fingerprint verification. You just hit the button and open sesame. And when you and Clay went through here, you didn't need to show your prints either. That's right, Trucy. Just like how the culprit didn't need to scan their prints. When they escaped uh, back out the Space Museum corridor into Boarding Lounge 2. The biometric door lock. Print authentication isn't required from the launch pad side. That's important. Well, I don't see anything else that jumps out at me. And I, I imagine this corridor is built exactly the launch pad 1 corridor. Do you know anything about this piece of evidence? No. Sorry, I'm so useless. It's literally you just told us about it. You literally just told us about the door. Uh, hang. No, no. It, it's all right. There's no need to get all depressed. You literally just told us about the door. Um. Uh. December 20, uh, Cosmo Space Center. Entrance. Ugh. Curse the wretch who soiled, uh, my, my good name. Reverse course and full speed away. Director Cosmos, wait. 
Oh my god, he's being... I'll handle his daddy, take that. Yeah, the mobility system has been compromised. Brucey's knife fro uh, fro was a direct hit to one of his tires. And the streak continues. Maybe I should have uh, kept a closer watch on what tricks she she's been practicing. My dear old battleship, we fought many a skirmish together. Uh, it has been an honor. Daddy, he's going to blow that thing up. Nah, I bet all that button will do is make it go haywire again. Very well, I surrender. As a prisoner of war, I expect to be treated honorably. Switching the launch pads. Director Cosmos, when you were talking in court about switching the launch pads, you used your right uh, to remain silent about the reason as to why. I'd like Director Cosmos to tell us why he switched the two launch pads to begin with. Please, I, I can't. I, I exercise my right to remain silent. But I will say, my hands were tied. I was only doing what I could to keep my men from getting caught in that blast. So basically, he knew about the explosion, so he has some knowledge of, of the plot that was going on. Why? I don't know how he didn't get arrested. The center of this cosmos is shrouded in mystery, but I don't have any secrets left. Now that my battleship has been destroyed and I've been taken prisoner. Oh, great. Oh, Cyclox. No secrets left, huh? I beg to differ. Looks like I'll have to undo his Cyclox if I want to get to the bottom of this. Okay, Cyclox, let's do it. The, the, the Cyclox music is also really creepy. What's he hiding? Behind the switching of the launch pads. Yeah, this music, it just always creeped me out so much. I want you to tell me everything you're hiding about the switching of the launch, the two launch pads. I refuse. You can't make me. I can hold out longer than anyone. I hope I never get like this when I'm old. Now let's see where to start. This is how you explain your motive for switching the launch pads. You did it. This is how you explain your motive for switching the launch pads. You did it to save the astronauts. That's what he's saying. Yeah, to save the astronauts. Remember he said the, um... Thanks to you switching the launch pads, the astronauts escaped injury from the blast. Instead, they safely bore the museum's rocket far away from the actual explosion. Mm. My astronauts were raring uh, to go out on an authentic adventure in space. How do you propose I had them board a fake rocket without them noticing? I agree, you couldn't have done it without help. For one, they would have figured it out the instant they stepped into the space museum. So Tehran was part of this, then. You figured you could fool Mr. Starbuck once he'd been drugged of his medication, but... Without the help of this person, it would have been impossible to pull your plan off. Tehran, yep. The victim in this case. Okay. Take that! You must have gotten Mr. Tehran to help you. He stole the tranquilizers from his mentor's locker and slipped them to him. And then with Mr. Starbuck in a daze, they boarded the replica rocket in the museum. Ah! Somebody please help this poor prisoner of war! How is he able to spin around like that? <sighs> yeah, I'm getting dizzy at this point. This is... Okay, it's one Cyclops broken. If you really wanted to save the astronauts' lives, shouldn't you have just called off the launch? If I uh, could have done that, uh, do you think I would have gone to all that trouble? I guess he must have had a compelling reason why he couldn't call it off. But how did you know to switch the pads in advance of the bombing incident? W well, that's because... Er... I was warned in advance. Once I received that warning, it was my duty to ensure my astronaut's safety. But it was just a warning. It could even it could have even been a prank. Why did you believe it so completely? Because I went to one of those mediums that everyone's talking about these days. Oh? I didn't realize channeling was back in, in vogue. So the the mediums, for people that don't know, they are basically like um They can uh talk with the dead, they can like predict the future. Maya was a medium. Um so that's, uh, that in the Ace Attorney world, that's what mediums are. And the, uh, Magatama that Phoenix is actually using is actually from a medium. Besides, I thought it was you, yourself, that got the warning via telephone. Yes, that's right, the bomber contacted me personally. My battleship is equipped with a special advanced communication system, you see. 
AKA a regular old telephone. It's been a while. Planning another launch. I see you haven't learned. I'll never forget the terror I felt when I received that call. The bomber said, it's been a while. And that was enough to make you take the threat seriously. Perhaps Director Cosmos took the threat so seriously because the Space Center had been involved in a bombing once before. Maybe. The culprit in, in the current case is the same person who was involved in this incident. The Hat One Miracle. That's what, um... Because his rocket almost failed in space, so somebody possibly sabotaged it. The courtroom bombing took place during the last case, so no. And the Hat 2 bombing? No, um... The Hat 1 Miracle. That epic story of survival. People across the nation know it now as a heroic tale of bravery. But in truth, it was an act of sabotage perpetrated by our current killer, wasn't it? Very few knew about the previous plot, so when the caller said it's been a while... You knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that the danger was real. And it wasn't a prank. Didn't anyone ever tell you to go easy on an ex-serviceman? Okay, only one side clock left. Okay. Yes, the Cat 1 miracle was really a desperate battle against an act of sabotage. I even lost the life of one of my staff members in the flight. Sabotage murder. So this is the ugly truth behind the Hat 1 miracle. I let my guard down. I thought the saboteur had been caught. And that the case was closed. Huh? Wait a minute. The murder at the Space Center seven years ago. Yes, um, it's Blackwell probably. I'm predicting this is gonna be Blackwell who was accused of this. This must be the person Director Cosmos fought was the culprit. Convicted of the murder at the Space Center seven years ago. He's chasing a phantom he saw back then. Yep, it's Blackwell. Take that! Simon Blackwell, the murder suspect in a case that happened here seven years ago. This pl the place and time of the two incidents, the murder and the sabotage, were the same. So you thought that he had committed both crimes. While Prosecutor Blackwell was behind bars, you got another a threatening call. If the culprit this time is the same as seven years ago, then it isn't Simon Blackwell. Realizing that, you were shaken. It meant the true culprit's been running free all this time. How do you keep seeing straight through me? Wow, we got that all right on our first attempt. Nice. Switching the launch pads. The reason why Director Cosmos won't talk about why he's switching the, the, the launch pads is connected to the truth behind the Hat One miracle. The sabotage and murder that happened at the Space Center seven years ago. Director Cosmos, tell us what you're hiding. If you really want to understand the reason I decided to switch the launch pads. We'll have to start with the story of that horrible nightmare from seven years ago. Seven years ago? You mean the so-called Hat One Miracle? But what happened seven years ago? The launch went smoothly, but once the ship entered outer space, then the troubles began. It was all the handiwork of a certain person and their evil scheme. So Mr. Starbuck's trauma traumatic experience wasn't accidental. Not only that, but before the launch, a very valuable piece of moon rock was stolen. But that wasn't the worst of it. One of my staff members was murdered. Wow, I had no idea such awful events were behind an exciting story of space heroism. All that, in spite of the Space Center having very strict security in those days. All personal effects were examined thoroughly coming or going. You couldn't even smuggle a withered old leaf through those checkpoints. Well, now you, you, you have one there. So, do you have any clue who was responsible for the sabotage? At the very least, I know it wasn't Simon Blackwell. I don't know enough to identify the true culprit, but it's clear what that person is. To put it simply, a spy. A spy? You mean someone who infiltrates a foreign country? Carries out dangerous missions that always gets the girl? Someone's watching way too many late night movies. 
Well, I guess we're talking about blowing up a rocket and stealing, um, a uh, research material. It's not all that surprising that a spy could be behind it all. The spy. Make no mistake, there's cutthroat rivalry between nations in the space R&D race. You want to know something? I think I know who, where the spy is from. The spy is probably from Virginia. Remember that, like, really suspicious country in the first um, Apollo Justice game? Uh, that country that has, like, a death penalty for, um, for smuggling one of their eggs out of the country? The spy is probably from Virginia. And the Borgias in, um, uh, in real, that's what Virginia is based on. The Borgias were a corrupt family that actually ran Italy back in the day. This was in the um, time of the Renaissance. Actually, the time of the Assassin's Creed takes place. Uh, they ran the um, uh, Italy. They were a very corrupt family. Um, uh, they were secrets that were constantly going on, conspiracies that were constantly going on. Uh, and um, uh, the uh, the Pope, uh, was Rodrigo Borgia, was also one of them too. So they had a lot of power and influence. Some tried to outdo others by any means possible, even deliberate obstruction. Seven years ago, we got a call before the launch warning us of sabotage. Same MO as this time. Yes, and here I thought the perpetrator had been caught, but it looks like I was wrong. Prosecutor Blackwell seems more like a ninja than a spy, don't you think? Aren't ninjas and spies basically the same thing? But there's a good reason we failed to find the real spy. A massive cover-up by the government. Government officials? Uh, government officials were too embarrassed to admit. But they had allowed such a thing to happen at the hands of a spy. Don't tell me they made the police rush the investigation. They did indeed. And then to cover up the sabotage, they cleaned up the story. Yup. Uh, uh, something the government would probably end up doing. And that was the Hat One miracle, wasn't it? But then seven years later, the same MO advanced warning of sabotage. That must have been the director's reason for switching the launch pads. Just like seven years ago. Seven years ago, the spy gave you advance warning of their plans, just like this time. But here's the question, why would the spy give advance warning? That's the question. That was what made you decide to switch the launch pads, wasn't it? But why did they call? That's right, the caller knew the facts of the case seven years ago, despite the cover-up. They knew about the sabotage, the moon rock, the murder, and they said... You don't want things to go like they did seven years ago, do you? I immediately thought of calling off the launch, but the government wouldn't let me. We don't give in to the likes of terrorists. We must proceed for our country's honor. It was quite a moving speech, actually. Moving, really? Maybe if you're easily inspired by political talking points. But I knew the truth. We had been warned, which meant that the danger was very real. And I knew there was no way to stop the spy. No matter what I did, they would find a way. That's why I switched the launch pads and staged a moving rescue scene. First, I snuck into the center the night before and switched the launch pads. That way, the astronauts would go from boarding lounge 1 to the space museum. Then I put a close for repair sign at the door to launch pad 1 in, the bo in boarding lounge 2. You did that so normal visitors wouldn't enter, right? What else did you do? I enlisted the help of several staff members, including Tehran. But you didn't let Mr. Starbuck in on it. He'd already been through enough, and he's no good at lying to keep a secret. I'm afraid I had no choice but to have him drugged. My plan went well until... Clay's, uh, murder, huh? After the culprit made their escape, I switched the launch pads back. I did it in such a way that no one would find out. But after all that effort... Tehran is dead and the Cat 2 is destroyed. And the Hope Capsule, which had been returned to us only recently, was also lost in the blast. My home, the center of the cosmos. My beautiful cosmos space center is done for. Wait, what did he mean by the hope capsule was lost in the blast? The hope capsule. I thought that the hope capsule was found at the crime scene with Mr. Tehran. It had just been brought back by the hope uh, space probe with asteroid samples inside. So what kind of samples are they? What's in them? The samples are scheduled for analysis in the near future. We haven't had time since they just came back the day before Tehran's murder. The capsule is being held in a safe in Launch Pad 1. But I gave it to Tehran before the incident, so it wouldn't be destroyed in the explosion. The idea was that w with it safely in Tehran's possession, he could make it look like he rescued it during the stage miraculous escape. But our precious research materials... 
ended up lost to that explosion anyways. But I thought Clay was supposed to keep it safe. You misunderstand. The launch pad explosion wasn't the one the capsule was lost to. It was lost after the police confiscated it as evidence. What? That means somebody in the police is in on this. It was the courtroom bombing from the other day. The capsule was there in the courtroom's evidence and was blown to smithereens. It probably wasn't blown to smithereens. Somebody probably took it before it was blown up. Yeah, another casualty of the blast. Ultimately, I think the culprit may have known about the switching and the launch pads. What? How? The police found a wiretapping device during their investigation today. A bug aboard my battleship, a tap -um on my advanced communication systems. A wire on that phone. Yes, a wire on this very phone. I use this phone to give instructions to my staff about the launch pad switch. Just to the few uh, select members who knew about the plan. Just before the incident, staff members were coming in and out of launch pad 1. The culprit probably slipped in with them amid the confusion and planted the bomb dead. Yes, if they were tapping your phone, they definitely could have pulled something like that off. But you really think the same spies behind this incident in the one seven years ago? Yes, I'm sure of it. Then this spy must be the phantom prosecutor Blackwell has been chasing. That's why Blackwell is so obsessed with this phantom. The prosecutor Blackwell told me once. The hunt I've been on for the phantom of seven years has continues even still. For starters, that case happened right here at this very space center too. So that's why Black Hole is so obsessed with finding the um, finding the the spy, the Phantom, because it'll prove his innocence. So if we can find this Phantom. That's right. We can clear Afina's name. And then there's the matter of Prosecutor Blackwell too. What about him? Well, if the culprit of seven years ago is the same person as in the current incident, it would mean Prosecutor Blackwell is innocent. That's still an if, though. Hmm. I wonder how dangerous that guy would be in court without handcuffs. But if we're going on a ghost hunt, count me in. <laughs> it's all over for me. Spin, spin, whirl, whirl. I'm done for. The center of the cosmos is doomed. You think he's going to be alright, Daddy? Well, at least he'll be in good company. There must be planets out there he can spin with. Which reminds me. I like to delve a, uh, a little deeper into the Hat One mission too. If you want to learn more, start with the Space Museum. There's a Hat One exhibit there. Oh, don't mind me. I'll just keep spinning here and see how the cosmos unfolds. It's like he achieved spiritual enlightenment or something. I'm sure he'll stop when he gets dizzy. Let's go visit the Space Museum. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> He's just... Oh. Look at, look at this right now. Look at this. Oh my god. December 20, Cosmo Space Center. Space Museum. Let's see, where's the exhibit on the launch seven years ago? There, that's the Hat 1 exhibit. Oh wow, look at that photo of the team. There's Clay, Mr. Starbuck, Director Cosmos, also Ara Blackwell, and even Ponko. Who's the person on the very far right? Who is that? But I've never seen the woman on the right before, yeah. Everybody looks so happy. Well, except for Director Cosmos. Let's check out the newspaper article, too. At one launch imminent. And there's a photo of the Hope's face probe. I guess it's only natural to talk about the murder or the sabotage. They really well, were keeping a secret, just like the director said. Daddy, take a look at that, that, that jacket. It must be the Hat One Team's uniform jacket. It's the same design as the one Apollo was wearing, the one that belonged to Clay. Actual jacket worn by the Hat One Team member, it says. Not a replica, huh? I wonder if it was Mr. Starbucks. Hat one exhibit, newspaper clipping, a photo of the people involved, the launch, and a jacket one of them wore. Hello. 
Uh, okay, we're gonna picture here. We got the robot there too. Oh, Junie? Oh, Miss Woods, what brings you here? I... I heard Thena got arrested, so I... I've been looking for you, Mr. Wright. I thought you might be here, at the scene. You must be worried, uh, but rest assured, I'm going to do my very best to defend her. Thena's going through such a hard time. I hope she doesn't uh, lose her heart. Even just coming back to this place must have been really difficult for her. Huh? You mean the Cosmo Space Center? What? Uh, you didn't know? She used to live here, when she was a little girl. She, she, she did. No, I didn't know. That's why she was suspicious. No wonder she knew so much. Miss Woods, could you tell me more in detail? Athena in the Space Center. Athena's mom worked here. If I remember right, she was a doctor of psychology or something like that. I wonder... I wonder if that woman on the far right is actually Athena's mom who was murdered. That's what I wonder. But why was the psychology specialist working at a space research, uh, research facility? I don't really know. But I do know that she lived and worked here, so Athena lived here too. Well, everybody needs a psychologist, even astronauts. Um, so it was far from Athena's first time here. I wonder why she didn't mention it. She probably didn't want to talk about it. This place is connected to a very sad memory for her. Sad memory. A sad memory? Can you tell me about it? There was a terrible incident here. It was seven years ago. Same time frame as the Hat 1 launch. Tina's mom, in the robotics lab. She was... Murdered. Wh what? After it happened, Dina stopped uh, coming to school. Poor Athena. And all this time, she never let on at all. I was so worried about her. I came here so many times, hoping to see her. But I never saw her again. After a while, we started exchanging letters, but I didn't, um, get to see her face to face for seven long years. And so the first time you'd seen her in seven years was during Professor Court's case. That's right, and I was so surprised. She was like a completely different person, so cheerful and happy. Young Athena. What was Athena like as a child? She was very sensitive and kind. She didn't talk very much. She liked to draw and paint at home. That's completely different from the Athena we know, know now. I can't even picture it. She never left the Space Center much because... She was very sensitive to other people's emotions. When she went to crowded places, she'd get dizzy from all the emotions flying around. It must be hard to hear other people's hearts as well as their voices. She always wore those big, heavy-looking uh, headphones. She said her mother made them for her as part of her research. Ah, huh, wonder what kind of research it was. Because of her special ability, Nina couldn't handle being in school very often. And I was always out sick because of my weak co constitution. Maybe that's why we became such good friends. We used to play together here at the Space Center a lot. It brings back memories. Sounds like Athena's mother played a big role here at the Space Center. Oh, Daddy, show her that picture. Atta girl, good idea. Present. Miss Woods, could you take a look at this for me? Oh look, there's Athena's mom. The woman on the far right, the one in the kimono. That's Dr. Metis Sykes, so yeah, I knew it. That's Athena's mom. Athena's mother, um, uh, mother's murder. Did it by any chance have any connection to the Hat 1 launch? What? Why, yes, it did. 
As I recall, it happened on the day before the launch. Just I suspected. But that wasn't the worst of it. One of my staff members was murdered. So this is the murder um, Director Cosmos was talking about. Does that mean the crime Prosecutor Blackwell was convicted of? Is the murder of Athena's mother? There's a chance her death is somehow connected to the current case. So did, did Athena know that Blackwell was accused of murdering her mom the entire time? Th th there is. Thank you for all your help, Miss Woods. And please, try not to worry. I won't let anything happen to Athena. Thank you, Mr. Wright. I know you'll uh, take good care of her. So we need to investigate the robotics lab, and also talk to Athena. We've got our plates full, Daddy. I hope we can fit it all in before the day is through. The detention center first, then. We have to see Athena before visiting hours are over. December 20. Detention center. Visitor's room. Well, if it isn't Mr. Lawyer, fancy meeting you here. Oh, hello, Detective Fulbright. Uh, here on business? To tell the truth, I'm here to interview Ted Tanay. The one behind the courtroom bombing incident? He suddenly said he's ready to tell the truth about the case. And what he was saying was so incredible, I just had to come right over to hear more. Incredible? What was he saying? Why don't you hang around and hear it for yourself? Really? Us? Are you sure? Oh, <laughs> I give you my special permission. Here comes the bummer now. Oh, great. This guy. Oh, uh, him. The, the, the corrupt cop murderer. Um... You, what nerve you have to come here? You're here to laugh at me, I suppose. Like I waste my breath on you. After all, you're the one who assaulted Apollo and put him in the hospital. Violence, no. Question, okay. No violence. Too bad Apollo didn't get a chance to say that before you attacked him. I, I... Fine. Then just answer me this, Mr. Tanay. What is this truth of yours about the courtroom you blew up? No, I didn't do it. I didn't blow up the courtroom. When I killed Detective Arm, there was another person in the room. What What are you talking about? Who else could have been there? I saw it, I tell you. I saw someone's hand as they were stealing the remote switch. This person was there and witnessed the murder I committed. W what? I don't know who it was. But that's who blew up the courtroom. You expect us to buy that? Easy there, Trucy. I don't see any Cyclops. But I guess he must not be lying. Pardon me. I got a little carried away. But I'm telling you the truth. I did not detonate that bomb. And there you have it. We can't exactly ignore his claims, of course. So we're doing a follow-up. We're even analyzing the bomb itself, or what's left of it. We haven't found any new facts yet, though. Wow, they are laid it all out piece by piece. Oh, look at all those beautiful little pieces. I... I wish I could have them. Uh-oh. Looks like his geek switch has been activated. Phony Fanty Bomb. It was found in Boarding Lounge 1 and detonated in courtroom on number 4. Fragments are being analyzed. Well, I hope you're ready for Prosecutor Blackwell's special brand of questioning. This is the phony fanta, uh, fanty bomb. Ah, anything but that. I'm afraid I have to be off now, too. I was just about to question Miss Sykes. You're going to see Athena now? That's right. Oh, did you folks come to see her? Sorry for the trouble, but could you come back later? Well, off I go. What bad timing. Looks like we'll have to wait until after her questioning is over to see her. And after we came all this way too. Well, I guess it's back to the space center. Let's go check out the robotics lab, daddy. Alright, sounds like a plan. Robotics lab.
So this is the robotics lab, huh? Looks like it's exactly one floor above the boarding lounge. And where people were directed to evacuate from via the emergency ladder. This is where Athena's mother was killed seven years ago. Speaking of someone who works with robots... Daddy, look, over there! Oh, it's Apollo. They plan to use this bag to carry the capsule, is that right? Yeah, more or less. Say, why don't we stop talking about the case and have a nice cup of tea instead? Apollo and Aura Blackwell? I wonder what they're talking about. Well, well, come to spoil our fun. Just when I was enjoying our, our alone time. Brucey and Mr. Wright. If it's Apollo you want, you can't have him. He said he's investigating on his own. And I respect his wishes. We just came to investigate this lab. <sighs> well, this is my lab, so you need my permission if you want to do any snooping. About what happened. I heard about the trial. You made a mincemeat out of that director. And suddenly, Starbuck was out and your little subordinate, the princess, was in. Case closed, and they all lived happily ever after. Ha 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 ha. Her, daddy say something to her. I suppose you're going to defend the princess in court, am I right? Princess, huh? I guess she's talking with Athena. Of course, Athena's innocent. Oh my, such loyalty and trust. She seems pretty suspicious to me, though. The emotionally unstable princess. There's your culprit for you, don't you agree, Apollo? I... I don't know yet. Apollo, how could you? What's wrong with saying I don't know if it's true? It's a very scientific approach. That is, that is actually kind of true, is um, uh, until you rule somebody out completely, is you can't say that, that um, uh, you can't say that you know 100% they did it, and you can't say that you know they didn't do it either. Um, that's, that's the thing is. It, it's, it might seem kind of messed up, but I, I, don't, I don't think Athena had anything to do with that, but we can't be 100% sure, that's the thing. Your subordinate is more level-headed than you. Or should I say, former subordinate. <laughs> I can't believe it. Does Apollo really suspect Athena? Phew, all this laughing has worn me out. Your turn to say something, hunk of junk. Mr. Tehran, you look pale. Shall I help you to this sick bay? That's not Mr. Tehran. Mr. Tehran? But that's Apollo you're talking to. Oh, this hunk of junk here is mistaking Apollo for Clay. Maybe Apollo's possessed by Clay's ghost. Mr. Tehran, how are you in how are your injuries? Mr. Tehran. Mr. Tehran, how are your injuries? Mr. Tehran. I guess Clay intends to hang around to haunt the princess that murdered him. Oh, and to haunt the lawyer that defended her, too, of course. Robot that can see ghosts. Yeah, right. And I'm a spirit medium. Sorry, but apparently scientists just don't tell very frightening ghost stories. I intend to defend Athena, no matter what you have to say about it. How perfectly foolish. That kind of blind belief makes people lose sight of the truth. Just like seven years ago. Seven years ago. Could you tell me about the incident seven years ago? Why? Do you enjoy trampling on people's feelings and rubbing salt in their wounds? Or do you just want me to talk? Hmm. In that case, what should I ask for in return? I'd like to hear about that incident too. It helped me understand the current case better. Huh? Apollo knows about the case too. Well, if you're the one who's asking, Apollo. Come on, hunk of junk. You tell the story. But Miss Aura, that's private information. Fisk, if you won't talk, I'll just have to make you talk. I feel so bad for that robot. Ah, yes, who cares about personal privacy? Not me. I'm ready to utilize my blast processing abilities to impart all available information. Wow, what a magic trick. He's like a completely different robot now. The bodies of all the robots that come through this lab are designed by Miss Aura. I was born seven years ago, Miss Aura was much, much younger then. 
Y yikes, better watch uh, what you say if you don't want to get recycled, Clonko. And then our hearts were created by that great genius, Dr. Meta Sykes. Hearts. Robots of hearts. Can you even make such a thing? Emotions are not irrational things. Our logic and our hearts can be integrated. The two navigation companions created by Miss Aura and Dr. Metis transcend humans. So she makes the robots, and um, Athena's mother makes the programming for the robots? Metis. Huh? She just glanced over at her desk. Nobody can continue Metis' research. She and her work were truly one of a kind. And now the two navigation companions are all that are left of Metis here on Earth. The robots are all that's left. Isn't she leaving out a very important someone? We built the ultimate con uh, creations together, but now she's gone. I get the feeling Dr. Sykes loved her robots almost as much as she, uh, she loved her daughter. And almost as much as she loved you. Ha 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 ha. What are you talking about? Don't make me laugh. But you lost someone too, didn't you, Apollo? Your friend Clay. I guess you and I are pretty much in the same boat. Miss Aura, would you like a tissue? Keep your traps uh, shut, hunk of junk. Ponko and Ponko. Ponko is an important keepsake of your time with Dr. Sykes. You should treat him better. What well, doesn't matter, he doesn't feel pain, and I can always repair his body. Besides, their hearts aren't actually in their bodies. What do you mean by that? The program uh, Metis wrote, wrote runs on a separate mainframe. Their bodies are controlled remotely from there. Their hearts and memories are there too. Those bodies are really just uh, peripherals. So I can do anything I want to them. Well, me doesn't mean you should. I'm not so sure that gives you the right to physically abuse the poor things. But why are you people looking into such an old case now anyways? Well, we believe the culprit of that incident might be the same person as in this case. But is going to find out who killed Dr. Sykes too. I'm sure you're aware of who Metis' killer is. Yes, Prosecutor Blackwell. Or so it seems. That's a quaint way of putting it. Are you implying you don't think he did it? I can't say anything for sure right now. But that's exactly why I'd like to hear your side of it to help me to be sure. Dr. Sykes and Simon. I was the one who invented, um, uh, introduced Simon uh, to Metis, you know? He wanted to learn psychology, he said, to give himself an edge in court. Uh, Prosecutor Blackwell's a forte, uh, his infamous power of suggestion technique. Exactly, and he was oddly serious about it, rather than a teacher-student relationship. He treated her more like how a loyal samurai would treat uh, his sovereign. Huh? He seems more like a lost soul than a dignified samurai to me. He even got along well with that miserable little princess. Why do you call Athena the princess anyway? Well, she is Metis' daughter after all, although she's nothing like her besides. Doesn't the selfish little princess always have lots of white knights hanging around? Now I think I, I, I see why Athena didn't say anything when we ran into Aura yesterday. It all makes sense now. So the culprit behind the two cases could be the same, huh? That settles it then. What does it settle? None of your business. Just forget you heard anything. I don't like that. How long are you people going to hang around in here anyway? What? But we came in here to take a look around. You think you can just waltz in and ransack a person's lab? Show me a search warrant. Uh, we're not the police, so we don't have one. Then get out, now. Clonko, show them out. C certainly, Miss Aura. Ouch, don't push. My apologies, I'm just following orders. Ah! Wow, we just got assaulted by a robot. What a way to get shown out. The nerve at that woman. What's with that horrible attitude? I guess that's just how she is. And why was Apollo going along with her? I guess it's because they have something in common. Apollo lost Clay just like how Aura lost Dr. Sykes. Uh, I'm really worried about him. 
He's not himself at all. He's usually not all cool and dark and mysterious like that. I guess that's true. Does she mean he's usually silly and dorky? I'm going to keep an eye on him. Hey, wait, Trucy, come back. He's gone. Hmm. What should I do now? Detective Fulbright is probably still questioning Athena. Guess I'll go back to the office. Alone. Ugh. Well, here I am. This office never felt so... empty. I guess I haven't been here at the office at all by myself in a long time. Huh. When I first became a lawyer, my mentor was here with me. Now I'm getting all sentimental, I must be tired. Huh? There's something on the floor. What's the letter doing here? Hey Nick, it's been a while, huh? Miss me? I know this handwriting. I read somewhere that you were holding a trial in the middle of an exploding courtroom. That must have been really something, although weird is par for the course with you. I think she or whatever paper she's reading is a little off on, on the details. I'd love to come visit, but I'm right in the middle of a difficult part in my training. So instead, think of me as you watch those Steel Samurai videos I sent. So this is, um... This is Maya, um, Faye. And, um, and, uh, she... Phoenix was talking earlier about Mia Fey. Mia Fey was his mentor. She was murdered in the first Ace Attorney game. And um, uh, Mia Fey was her younger sister. And uh, she was like an assistant and best friend for Phoenix. I'm sure they'll cheer you right up. Yours truly, Mia Fey. Yep, I knew it. Good old Maya. It's as if she knew I was feeling down and needed a lift. Maya was my assistant for quite a while. That's from the uh, first Ace Attorney game. Believe it or not, uh, but uh, she's a spirit medium. This Magatama um, I use on Cyclox, Maya's the one who gave it to me. But I wonder how this letter got here. Oh, um, Mr. Nick. Ah, Eek. Oh, it's you, Pearls. Pearls, uh... How have you been, Mr. Nick? This is Pearl Faye, though I call her Pearls. She is Maya's cousin, who is also a spirit medium. A very talented one at that. I've known her since she was eight years old. But Apollo and Athena only m met her a few months ago. You didn't come all this way just to bring me a letter, did you? And so that's why you guys told me to play that special episode. Because a special episode was a DLC case for this game, but it took place um, in between the story. And that's how um, uh, how Apollo met um, Pearls before. I apologize for bar barging in. The door was unlocked. But I can't believe there was a big explosion here. Your office doesn't look any different. He's even further off on details than Maya. I wish I could take you out, uh, to eat or something, Pearls, but there's a lot going on. Oh, I know that. Um, I- I didn't come here for a social vision, you know, Mr. Nick. Pearls errand. Did you read the postscript on the letter? Huh? There's more? Oh yeah, here it is. Yes. I bet you've been too busy to clean or take care of the office. So Pearly said she would come help you. Isn't she sweet? You- you better thank her. Oh, so that's why you're doing, uh, what you're doing here. That's awfully nice of you, Pearls. I am Pearls. Thanks to these two. I'm starting to feel a little better. Thank you, girls. Now what I'm, I'm, now that I'm here, I'm going to whip this place into shape. You just concentrate on your work and don't mind me at all. I'll need to talk to Prosecutor Blackwell if I want to learn more about this, his case. With the trial still going on, they must be holding him down at the detention center. Okay, um... Let's go to the detention center. December 20. Detention center. Visitor's room. Well, look who's here. I wonder what they're talking about. All this time, and you haven't said a word. 
it's even turning your hair gray. Oh, it's Black Will. I don't have anything to say, Aura. Why don't you go home and play for your dolls? Prosecutor Blackwell. Well, even if you don't, I have plenty, you jerk. Miss Blackwell, don't you think that's enough for today? Enough for today? This is all there is when there's no tomorrow. When there's no tomorrow? What is she talking about? He's probably gonna get executed. That's probably what's gonna happen. It's probably the death penalty. Oh, we have company, Aura. Please try to calm down. All right, fine. I see you're uh, just not going to listen no matter what I say. I've, I've had it. If that's the way you're going to be, I have another plan up my sleeve. I hope you're happy, Simon, because I'm done. Do as you please. See if I care. Oh. Wow. I could cut the tension with a katana. Right, oh no. It looks like Fulbright saved your case in court this morning. What? Oh, yeah. He did. You bounced back to business quick. For Prosecutor Blackwell, forgive me, but it was just, just thing, the just thing to do. But as a result, Sykes Dono was arrested. Was that the just thing to do, too? Mr. Lawyer, I'm sorry, but if it, it was evidence. What else could I do? Don't worry about it. I plan to defend her and prove her innocence. I wouldn't take a thing so lightly if I were you. Right, Dono? This is a bladder, uh, blade-proof glass, right? I, why did I read that as bladder-proof, um, uh, uh, seven years ago? Prosecutor Blackpool, we're looking into the case from seven years ago. You're looking for someone you call a phantom of seven years past, aren't you? You villain! Where did you hear about that? Uh, th this, this glass is absolutely, positively blade-proof, right? No, it wasn't me. I didn't say a single... W oops. Ouch, at least it wasn't my fault. Could you tell me who this phantom is? And also, you didn't really kill Dr. Sykes, did you? Guard, this guest is leaving. Prosecutor Blackwell, please listen to me. The culprit in the current case might be the same one in the case seven years ago. If you would cooperate, we could probably solve both cases. Hmm. I suppose I could talk. The one who killed my mentor was, without question, me. I stole Psych Dono's mother away from her. I destroyed her life. Prosecutor Blackwell. Why is he admitting to something he didn't do? That's the question. Guard, where are you? Stop dragging your feet, I tell you. There he goes. No! We've upset Prosecutor Blackwell! Now what are we gonna do, Mr. Lawyer? There isn't much we can do. Detective Fulbright, do you mind if I ask you just a little more about that old case? Well, I guess it won't make any difference, uh, now. What would you like to know? Trial seven years ago. Do you know anything about that trial that got him convicted? A little. The police call the incident the UR1 incident. Prosecutor Blackwell is charged with murdering his psychology mentor. Kind of like if you read, if your red Mr. Lawyer were to kill you. I don't want to think about that one. <laughs> there were two decisive pieces of evidence, so a verdict was reached very quickly. Two pieces of evidence, huh? What were they? Let's see. The first was some security camera footage. He was the only one who used a corridor to the murder uh, scene at the time of the crime. The only one, huh? Ouch, that does sound pretty decisive. Could you show me that footage? Oh, sorry, I don't have it with me right now. I guess I'll have to see it uh, some other time. Seven-year-old video. Video showing the corridor of the crime scene. Black hole is the one that passed through at the time of the crime. And what was the second piece of evidence? Oh, I... Yeah, and I, I can't watch the video, too. But... He's the only one who went through the corridor. So that means the video has to either be fake, or there has to be another way for the killer to get there. The robotics lab. This one's even more incriminating. A photo of the moment of the crime. 
See? There he is, the crime scene, holding a bloody katana. Hmm. But that doesn't mean that he he killed her. He, he, he could have just come in and pick up the katana in shock. That could have happened too. Um, people... If people do this in real life, too, is, um, they go to a crime scene, they find somebody dead, and then they might find, like, a gun on the floor, a knife on the floor, like, the murder weapon, and they might pick it up in shock. Uh, so that, that does happen. So just because he picked it up and he's there does not mean that he did it. And we, we can't even see his face, so we can't be, it does look a lot like him, but we can't be 100% certain it's him either. It was the victims kept on display in the room. She had a thing for, uh, Japanese culture. Wow, it'd be hard to explain this one away. Any the weapon used in the murder seven years ago belonged to the victim. The victim's blood was found only on the blade. But who took took this picture, detective? The incident happened the day before the Hat One launch. A reporter who had come to do a story in the launch was in the room across from the lab. This just happened to show up in one of the pictures he took. Photos of the crime taken inadvertently. It became conclusive evidence of Simon Blackwell's trial seven years ago. Prosecutor Blackwell's attitude earlier was so odd. He's definitely hiding something. Prosecutor Blackwell said he was hunting a phantom for seven, seven years ago, didn't he? Yes, and I imagine it's getting more and more urgent as his execution date approaches. W what did you just say? I knew it. I knew it, execution date. What? What? Did I say something? Never mind. You didn't hear a thing. Execution date. So he was given the death sentence. Yes, uh, he told me not to tell you people, actually. But I guess there's no sense hiding it anymore. His execution date is tomorrow. What? Tomorrow? No. M miss miss uh, Blackwell, don't you think there's enough for today? Enough? Enough for today? Today is all there is when there's no tomorrow. Turn about tomorrow, that's why this case is, is called that. But what if the culprit of the current case is the same one as the one from seven years ago? Then it would be the worst possible scenario. Prosecutor Blackwell would be executed tomorrow under a false charge. But that would be un unthinkable. We have to do something right now. I want to do something. I I want to, but... Uh, so basically, for people that are confused, I can explain this a little bit. The Ace Attorney games um, do tend to criticize things in real life law, and I think what they what they were criticizing in um, in the first game is they were criticizing basically trial by um, uh, tr trial by judge. They were saying that trial by jury is superior, and I and I agree with that. I agree with the developers on that. That trial by jury is always better than trial by judge. Um, it's always better to be judged uh, by your peers than being judged by a judge. Like a single guy. Um, it's better your peers, they can more relate to you, they can under, maybe understand the situation better too, than a judge who just reads the law. That's it. Um, but anyways, about this is, um, when people are given the death penalty, they are actually not executed right away. It actually, it's a long process, it takes years. Um, uh, se believe it or not, seven years is actually pretty early for an execution. I don't think that they actually happen after just seven years. Um, the, um, uh, executions tend to happen, like, after, like, 10 or 15 years, like, around there. And the reason it takes so long to execute the person afterwards is because there's a set of appeals. There's so many, it goes through so many appeals courts. And, um, it te uh, technically, it does does cost more to execute the person than to keep the person in prison for life. You would think that it would cost, um, uh, uh, it would be cheaper to execute the person, but no, it's not because of all the appeals that goes through court. When somebody's in life in prison, they're not really going through all these appeals. When they're in, um, uh, in court, they're gonna go be going through all these appeals, and the lawyer's gonna be paid, the court's gonna be paid. Um, there's just so many fees that are, that are gonna be going through that. Um, but basically what the developers here are criticizing, at least from what I'm seeing, is they're basically um, uh, saying that the death penalty is wrong because an innocent person could be accused and could be executed. And I do get that argument, but my view on it personally is I don't think that it's the, the death penalty that is necessarily at fault. Um, the way I personally see it, in my opinion, innocent people have been executed, but if an innocent person is executed, I don't really blame that on the death penalty. Um, I blame that more on the courts and the detectives who messed up the case. It's more the people that were in charge of messing up the case who got the wrong person. It's that them who are more at fault than the death penalty. Because the death penalty, you know, 
when somebody's innocent, yes, it's the worst thing possible. It's, you know, you're, an innocent person is going to get executed. But the thing about that, um, what I will say is a lot of people use that argument. They say, uh, for example, that, oh, you know, the death penalty is wrong because innocent people get executed. But if you, those same people who say the death penalty is wrong because innocent people get executed, if you find them somebody that is 100% guilty, somebody that you know did it without a, a shred of doubt, they will still be against the death penalty even for that person. So when it comes to the death penalty, my viewpoint on it is it's I think it should more be up to the prosecutor and it should be up to the victim's family like the, if the victim's family wants a death penalty then the prosecutor should go for it if the victim's family doesn't want the death penalty then don't go for it put the person in life but I think it should ultimately be up to the victim's family and it should be up to the prosecutor that's just the way that I personally see it so, um, uh, like I said, is if, if an innocent person get, gets executed, it does happen. It's happened before in the past. If it happens, it's more the fault of the courts than the death penalty. Because the death penalty is just a charge. It's more the fault of the court who messed up. They messed up. That's what people don't talk about. The courts messed up and the detectives messed up who ruined the case. Um, you're a lawyer. You know how hard it is to overturn a decision. I know, but why? Why isn't Prosecutor Blackwell putting up any kind of a fight? You saw how he was, right? He's been like that ever since his conviction. Totally uncooperative. Not even his own sister could persuade him. Uncooperative? When he's about to be executed for crime he didn't commit. This isn't right. I can't let it happen. I have to stop it somehow. Oh, pardon me. Looks like I have a phone call. Fulbright here. What? What's happening? You've got to be kidding! That's quite a reaction. I bet he's making some big show of it right now. M M Mr. Lawyer, the robots! The robots are... What? Detective Fulbright, get a hold of yourself. Some kind of robot malfunction? No, not a malfunction. They're staging a revolt. The machines are rebelling against humans. What? Is this Terminator or something? They've holed themselves up in the space center and taken visitors as hostages. What? They did what? No. Trucy. We have to get uh, right over there. This is going to be one heck of a battle. Oh, great. What the hell is going on now? The robots have taken over the center. December 20th. Uh, Cosmo Space Center. Entrance. The riot police are here. Then the robots really are holding people hostage. Hmm. Look, Mr. Lawyer. What do you suppose that group of people are swarmed about around? But I was only trying to help the nice person. She said she was lost. You robots have declared war on us humans. You've taken hostages already. Stay away from it. You never know what it'll do. But he's not a bad robot. Can't you see he's just trying to help me? I recognize that voice. Detective Fulbright, are you uh, okay here on your own? Leave it to me. All right, people. What's going on here? Pearls, over, over here. Oh, Mr. Nick. There you are. I heard the terrible news, and I got so worried. Thanks, Pearls. I can hardly believe what's what's happening myself. I'm so glad you found each other. When people are happy, I am happy. Blanco seems the same as before. When people are sad, I am happy. When people are angry, when people are... Oh, did I say something odd? Did I err? Uh-oh, there is something wrong with him. God! We're... It looks like he fell asleep. He must have been tired. <laughs> um, Klonko? Ha ha ha! Human beings are enemies. It's time for the machines to take over. Ah! The robots are rebelling. Everybody run! Eat! It's an all-out war. It's the end of the world. Ha ha ha, fools. How could you fall for something so cliche? I'm human too, you idiots. I'm just controlling these robots remotely. W what? But it is true that I've taken hostages, so you better not make me mad. So somebody has hacked into the robots and is using the robots to uh, take hostages? Hey you, hostage number one, come here. I'll let you talk to them. Huh? There's something being displayed on Klonko's face screen. It's the Space Museum. 
Daddy? Daddy, is that you? Trucy, Trucy, is that you? No. Trucy, are you alright? About 15 robots are holding 12 of us hostage, Daddy. They've gone haywire. A researcher is the one behind it. She's here, gone eek. There, this girl talks too much. It's Aura. Aura's doing it. Trucy, Trucy, talk to me. Why are you doing this? I'm glad you asked. My demand is simple. I hope that detective is listening. Bobby Fulbright here. I'm all ears. I want you to bring someone to me. Clay Terran's murderer. Uh, Athena Sykes. Athena? Now, now hold on just one moment. I can't give in to a demand like that. So you don't care what happens to these hostages, huh? I'll just pick one out then. No, no, no wait. Ah, m m Mr. Lawyer. I know I have absolutely no right to make such a ridiculous request, but... But you need me to, uh, you need me to buy some time, right? Got it. I'll see what I can do. But promise me, promise me you'll never hand Athena over, and you won't give up on the hostages either. Oh, of course I won't. Now I better go contact headquarters. Uh, Mr. Nick, how do you plan to buy time? I have no idea yet, but this hostage taker, could it be... If you don't bring me that little princess, I'll have Hunk of Junk kill all the hostages. Princess? Hunk of Junk? So is this why this case is rated M? Because the, the hostages that are being taken? There's only one person this could be. In which case, there must be something I can use as a bargaining chip. I don't have anything to say, Aura. Why don't you go home and play with your dolls? Prosecutor Blackwell. Well, even if you don't, I have plenty, you jerk. Miss Hostage Taker, Rafina is not a murderer. What are you talking about? She's been arrested and they've got her in detention. I'm telling you the truth. Look, the person you want is the real killer, right? Well, it is not Athena. It's someone else. All right, let's hear your stupid little theory. Who is this, re this real killer? I don't know yet, but the culprit is the same one as the one in the case from seven years ago. The UR1 incident. I believe you have a personal interest in that case. Hmm. It's too late to change what's going to happen now, no matter how wrong it is. But it, 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 is it really too late? You can still do something about it. You might even be able to fix it. Just, what exactly are you proposing? What can I do about the seven-year-old case to satisfy the hostage uh, taker? Retry in court. I propose we retry the case from seven years ago. If you make that demand now, I'm sure nobody will deny you. It wouldn't be an official trial, but at least we could find out the truth. <laughs> That's good, real good. Hey, detective, I'll give you one hour. Get a courtroom ready. One hour? Well, that's impossible. Please give me at least until tomorrow. If you don't mind losing hostages, you can take all the time you want. Oh, but wait. If we're going to have a retrial, we'll need a prosecutor. Don't worry, I'll take care of that. She, she, she will. And I guess I can be fair and let you come in and check out the crime scene. A hunk of junk here will be watching you, so don't try anything funny. You got that? Now follow hunk of junk. Riot police make way. We're coming through. Mr. Nick, wait. I'll help you with the investigation. Thanks, Pearls. I appreciate that. Okay, we're going in. Yeah, this is, it's definitely Aura. She's protecting her brother. Robotics lab. Aura dropped us off with a warning not to touch anything until she got back. I wonder what's taking so long, but we can't really start the investigation yet, can we? Even if we could, this means it's... It, it, this means a mess makes it hard to tell what what the room was like seven years ago. Mr. Wright. Ack, it's the hostage taker. I'm back to my usual self now. You are still being monitored, however. But more importantly, an important guest has arrived. A, a guest? Oh, it's Edgeworth. Yep. That's his, his sports car. Remember that that made an appearance in the anime. I 
I trust you've been well, right? Edgeworth, what are you doing here? This is Miles Edgeworth. We've been uh, friends since we were kids. We faced off in court a number of times back when he was a prosecutor, and that and Edgeworth is also my avatar in PlayStation. Um, but now. Hello, Prosecutor Edgeworth. Edgeworth is also a good guy, um, uh, oh, but you're not a prosecutor anymore, are you? Uh, uh, he's a prosecutor, but he's a, he's a pretty fair guy. He used to be a pretty bad guy, like, in the first game, but he changed. Uh, uh, I have to play his games one day. His, his, Edgeworth has two games where you play as him, Miles Edgeworth Investigations 1 and 2. Uh, I gotta play those games one day on the channel. Uh, he's a chief prosecutor now. Pretty soon it'll be a year, right? A title is nothing more than a title. Don't, oh, we have more pressing issues to discuss. Miles Edgeworth. Uh, so what are you doing here, Edgeworth? The cap, uh, captor, uh, chose me as a prosecutor for the UR1 case. Wow, she's good. She went all the way up to the top. I gathered all the information I could in the short time that I had. I'll give you a rundown. You're always so well prepared, Prosecutor Edgeworth. Thanks. I appreciate this. I could really use the help. The UR1 incident. I'll start with a brief overview. The victim was the psychologist, uh, Dr. Amenis Sykes. Yeah, Athena's mother. Seven years ago, on the 7th of October, her body was found here in this very room. I have two crime photos and the police uh, notes on, on them for you to see. That's the murder scene. What a terrible way to die. This other photo shows the other side of the room, uh, I see. Seven-year-old photos. Two photos of the body in the crime scene. They were taken by the first person to discover the body. I also have the autopsy report for you. Mentis' autopsy report. The cause of death was a stab wound to the chest. The weapon pierced the heart, and so death was instantaneous. The murder uh, weapon was the victim's own katana found at the scene. <coughs> Excuse me. Yes, Detective Fulbright mentioned she was into Japanese culture. The body was found by a Space Center staff member and two police officers. The police uh, were called in because of the sabotage threat on the Hat 1 launch. Yes, the Director Cosmos mentioned this too. A few hours after the body was discovered, a suspect was arrested. The suspect was Simon Blackwell, a young prosecutor. I hear his trial was over in a flash. Yes, a guilty verdict was declared in only one session. Not only did he plead guilty, but there was decisive evidence against him too. The security camera video. And a photo of the a moment of the crime, as I recall. But did Prosecutor Blackwell have a motive? Hmm. To this day, his motive is still unknown. He insisted he did it, but he would never say why. So that means he must still be hiding something. Why is he admitting to a crime he didn't do? He's either covering for somebody or he's being threatened. Right, and there's another aspect of the case that was never revealed to the public. Yeah, I know. The part about the spy, right? Right. How on earth do you know about that? Director Cosmos told me after a bit of pressure. He told me espionage and sabotage were behind the Hat One miracle. Don't worry. I won't tell anyone. I've always been good at keeping secrets. Well, I might as well tell you now. They really do suspect Blackwell of being a spy. They think he sabotaged a rocket and killed Dr. Sykes to steal the moon rock. But if you can prove that the Hat 2 bombing is the work of the same spy, we can state uh, the execution. It's a possibility. That's why I intend to help you any, any way I can. Thanks, Edgeworth. Now all I have to do is uh, comb this room for evidence. Let's do it together. Okay. I have to try to find evidence in this room. Um... This is the chair that she was killed in? It looks like an operating table. It's in the photo too. Yes. It was here th then as well, the victim's body lying on it. There's a button here. Oh, I know. I'll try pushing it. Pearls, don't uh, touch the... Oopsie. What the? Hey, it's moving. 
Oh, it assembles robots. Yeah, look at that. Wow. Hmm. It appears to be a robot assembly device. Disassemble anything in the flash, push the dismantle button. That sounds pretty neat. Can I push it, Mr. Nick? Please don't uh, push any more uh, buttons, Pearls. Aura's desk is a mess, though that doesn't surprise me. Oh, I just want to dive in and straighten it up. Wait, before you do... Metis. Huh? You just glanced over at her desk. It's Metis Sykes. Blanco, can I talk to you? I really hope he's back to normal. You wish to speak to me, Mr. Wright? If you're going to hit me, please avoid the face area. Hey, uh, don't put me in that same uh, class as that woman. What was Aura like seven years ago at the time of the incident? When Mother died, Miss Aura was confused. Huh, so he calls Dr. Sykes a uh, mother. But Aura Black will miss Aura? With the loss, she exhibited a severe uh, uh, catechlomine uh, imbalance. Excuse me, but I have no idea what that means. Pardon me, searching for alternate exp expression. She would spend the nights crying and take out her feelings on those around her. After Prosecutor Blackwell was found guilty, she reportedly uh, uh, demanded a retrial as well. That is correct. Without new evidence, her requests were ignored. And then, little by little, Miss Aura began to change. She started to hate it when I called her Mama Aura. And before long, she started hating the, the court system and abusing, um, Klonko, huh? That murder destroyed, uh, so many lives. Right. Take a look at this paper of Dr. Sykes and Miss Blackwell's research. So, um... So, Aura used to be a nicer person, uh, but, uh, when her friend died, she changed. Uh... Klonko and Klonko, they're the robots of hearts that Dr. Sykes created. Uh, Ponko series features can determine the presence of a human with their heartbeat detection system, recognize people by scanning their spacesuit or uniform jacket ID tag, and also recognize a person by facial features once the face has been registered. Uh, can infer people's emotions by analyzing their tone of voice and communications with them, and communicate with them. So why is it recognizing Apollo's Tehran? A heartbeat detection system lets them determine when a human is present. In addition, they can recognize people by their ID tags or facial features. And they can infer people's emotions by analyzing their tone of voice. Maybe, maybe because Apollo's wearing Tehran's uniform. That's amazing. Hey, I don't know Edgeworth. They might even be more human than you. W what's that supposed to mean? It kind of sounds like those robots can do what Athena does. Explains the recognition and communication features of the Ponko series of robots. Oh look, it's a little robot. I wonder what it does. Cleaning, maybe? A cleaning robot must follow human's orders as long as it causes no human harm. Yikes, it talks. A cleaning robot must keep desks clean without violating the preceding clause. However, Miss Aura says she prefers a moderate level of clutter on the desk. Oh, what is the purpose of my existence? Guess it's slack off and, and cut some corners aren't in his vocabulary bank. Emergency ladder. An emergency ladder is mu must be the one they used during the evacuation. The explosion disabled the elevators, so I lowered my emergency ladder like the detective leading uh, the evacuation told me to. As Miss Blackwell was climbing down the side of the building, she saw the culprit inside. I wonder which would have been scarier, that or looking down. It was emergency ladder. It was lowered to the ground from the window to the fourth floor robotics lab. It was used to evacuate space center personnel. We pretty much got everything in this room. What is this? What's this? Oh, same, same. It looks like a giant power plug. Hmm. It's attached to what looks like an electric vehicle, a charging station. That's a charging station for us robots. We come here periodically and charge ourselves up. Wow, 
Machines that maintain themselves. That's pretty cool. If our batteries run out and we lose consciousness, we never know what Miss Aura will do to us while we're down. You see, nothing motivates quite like fear, huh? Hey, look at this roll of rolling cases. I bet the wheels make it easier for people to move heavy resource materials around. I bet they'd be fun to ride around in. We could even probably both fit into the biggest one. I know we could have Prosecutor Edgeworth push us. <laughs> I don't trust him not to push us down a flight of stairs. What on earth is this thing? This is one heck of a robot. There's something written on it. Is this supposed to be a poem? I cut down anyone who displeases me. I make the rules. I am the law. I wield the ultimate gavel of judgment. I am Judgetron, JT02. I don't believe we need to bother with that, Pearl. It's not even completed yet. He's right, Pearls. There's no sign of it in the photo from seven years ago, either. They were building the Hope space probe here at the time. The murder occurred after the space probe had been removed from the room. So it was long um, gone by the time someone took this picture, huh? But you can see the probe in this newspaper photo. Yes, and you can see that the stolen moon rock there too. That strange black and yellow thing on the left side of the picture. No, that same rock is absent from the crime scene photo. Yeah. It's not there. It's the, the katana is gone too, and so is the rock. Yeah, it's gone. Not only that, but before the launch, a very valuable piece of moon rock was stolen. I hear there's lots of researchers in the moon rocks and stardust from asteroids these days. They say the results could potentially have a huge impact on all of civilization. It's like we're in a new space race with every other country out there. So the person who stole it... Think it was our spy? I'm sure of it. Dr. Sykes probably killed because she was a roadblock in their plan. Unfortunately, the government thinks Prosecutor Blackwell is the culprit. It's about as cluttered as my office, but I think it's a workbench. Mr. Nick, I think this must be a kitchen. Looks, and look at this photo. See the uh, cute little food processor? This isn't a food processor, Pearls. That's the Hope capsule. It was scheduled to be loaded onto the Hope space probe that fateful day. Three people who came to collect the capsule discovered the body. The first on the scene, huh? Staff member and two police officers, was it? And they were here to collect a capsule. Which reminds uh, me. So they plan to use um, uh, the bag to carry the capsule, is that right? Yeah, more or less. Say, why don't we stop talking about the case and have a nice cup of tea instead? Hello and Aura Blackwell. I wonder what they're talking about. Edgeworth, did those three people have a bag with them for transporting the capsule? Oh, you mean this? It's a custom-made shock-resistant bag, but how did you know? Oh, I just overheard Apollo making an inquiry about it, that's all. Hmm. So he's looking into the case from seven years ago on his own, is he? Hope Capsule. It was at the crime scene seven years ago. It was launched into space and only returned to Earth a few days ago. Well, I guess that's about it for this room. So what do you think, right? Any ideas? There are still a lot of gaps in the evidence, but I'll pull it off somehow, after all. You asked me to prove Blackwell's innocence, right, Edgeworth? What? He did. Yep. He called it a special request. He reached out to me while I was still disbarred. Edgeworth's request. So that was what sparked you to get your attorney's badge back. Yep, the Blackwell case. Right. I have a special request. I want you to clear one of my subordinates of suspicion. Hey, I'm not even a lawyer anymore, remember? Haven't been one for a long time. That eight-year misunderstanding has been cleared up, and you must be eager to return. I'm sure you're familiar with the, the other case that ushered in the dark age of the law. Very soon a convict will stand as a prosecutor in court. I want you to keep an eye on him. Ah, oh, just when I'm beginning to actually like the job I have now. Right. I'm sorry I dragged you into this. Because of the espionage aspect, I wasn't free to give you all the details. 
Hey, no need to apologize. It's like I said on the phone the other day. I know that the type of criminals you're after now aren't small fries anymore. It looks like your target finally decided to make a move. Yeah. It's for this very reason I returned. Time to bring it to an end. I'm going to end the Dark Age of the Law. That's what, what this is all about. The Dark Age of the Law. The Dark Age of the Law. It sure comes up a lot these days on TV and the papers. And I hear there are more false uh, charges and fabrications of evidence than ever. When I became Chief Prosecutor, the court system had already lost the people's trust. It all began eight years ago. A lawyer was caught fabricating evidence. And a year after that, prosecutor was found guilty of murder. Wait, th do you mean... That's right. He's talking about my case and Prosecutor Blackwell's. It was a downward spiral after that. An absolute nightmare. After those two cases, the mass media launched an all-out attack on the courts. Public opinion was tainted, and before long, the legal world itself was sucked into it. Hmm. It's such a shame. Once su suspicion forms, it's very hard to shake. Lawyers and prosecutors were supposed to uh, trust each other, pursue the truth together. Yeah, that's, 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 um, th what I will say about that is, um, that's just the way Ace Attorney always frames it. A prosecutor is pretty much convinced that they're that they're that the, that the defendant is guilty. Uh, it's very hard to change their mind. Um, if anything, maybe they could drop the charges if they you know truly you know realize that. But most of the time, they don't. And a lawyer isn't to be fair isn't pursuing truth either. Most of the time, um, maybe good lawyers are, but a lot of times lawyers are there just to get their clients off. That's basically the whole purpose. Um, it's so sad when people begin to cast doubt. Um, they start lying to themselves and each other. Yes, and do absolutely anything to win. We're in an age now where winning is valued more than truth. I'm sure it's caused our new chief prosecutor to lose many a, a night's rest. Is it just me, or did his bro get even more furrowed than the last time I saw him? Hmm. The hostage taker's disdain for the courts is a perfect example of the times. It sure is. Do you have any idea who the hostage taker might be? Well, somebody who mistrusts the court system and who can manipulate robots. It can really only be Aura Blackwell. Who else but her would want to retrial that case from seven years ago so badly? I'm in Blackwell's older sister, and the owner of this room. I agree with your conclusion. Perhaps she intended to force Miss Sykes to confess. Actually, I think she had a much a more horrific plan in mind for Fina. The important thing is for you to solve UR1 and prove Blackwell's innocence. And then maybe she'll release the hostages. I'm counting on you, right? To set uh, that prosecutor and those hostages free. And I'll be counting on you in court to help me too. Of course, I'll do everything I can to help uncover the truth. As this isn't an official trial, I'm more at liberty to be a little unorthodox. Mr. Wright, are you finished with your investigation? Yes, but I'd like to tell the hostage taker something. I'd like you to tell the hostage taker something for me. I have to go to the detention center. I can't start the trial until I've talked to Athena. She's already given her consent. I'll accompany you to the detention center. So I'm still being watched, huh? I'll see you in court, Edgeworth. Hmm. Even if it will be an undocumented trial, it'll be good to face you in court again. It's gonna be kind of a weird case, because Edgeworth's gonna be trying to help us, but he's also prosecuting. Um, December 20, uh, detention center. Visitor's room. She was right by my side uh, only a few short hours ago. But I feel like I haven't seen her in ages. Oh, Mr. Wright. And, uh, Pearly, too. I knew, um, uh, you'd come after all. The first step is to interview with the defendant. And because you're my friend and I, and I was worried about you. <laughs> thanks, boss. I'm not the only one who's worried, either. Really? Who else? I saw Miss Woods today. She was so besides herself, she came to find me. She told me you used to live in the Cosmos Space Center. No wonder you knew so much about the place. Oh. So you know, huh? I... I'm sorry I didn't tell you. That's alright. But... There are other things I'd like to ask you. 
Sure. You can ask me anything. I promise I won't keep any more secrets from you. Day of the crime. Tell me about the day Clay was murdered. I... I was actually at the Space Center that day. In... in the Space Museum. Right where the culprit fled too. That's not good. I never could fully deal with what happened seven years ago. But when I saw the center again during the news coverage of the Hat 2 launch, I thought maybe if I went there, things would be different this time. It must have taken a lot of courage to face your past like that. So I went to the Space Museum the evening before the explosions. This was before the launch pads had been switched. There was a sign that said close for repairs and they weren't letting anyone in. Yeah, the director could have very well they'll switch the pads. There were people in there. But I snuck in anyway. Did you want to see that the hat one group photo? The one with your mother in it? I did. But what I really wanted to see was her jacket. That jacket on display. That was Dr. Sykes. Newspaper clipping, a photo of the people involved with the launch, and the jacket worn by Dr. Sykes. But I should have known. It wouldn't be, wouldn't be easy to get over such a traumatic experience. The second I saw that jacket, it all came rushing back to me. Everything around me went hazy, and I couldn't see. I tried to get out of there somehow. But I guess I passed out. When I came to, I was in the passage behind the rocket. I was in the shadows, where people couldn't really see me. Maybe you got confused and went the wrong way when you were trying to leave. How long do you think you were unconscious, Athena? I was out until about noon of the next day. I didn't even know about the, the explosions. When I woke up, nobody was around, so I just went out uh, into the boarding lounge too. My mind must have still been fuzzy, because my memory is vague after that. I don't remember how I got home. No memory, huh? This is gonna be tough. Which means, what if I'm the one who killed Clay? I think that's enough of that, Athena. Let's talk about something else. So during the enti entire incident, she was unconscious in the space museum. Of course, I believe her. But will anybody else? Your mother's work. What kind of research with Dr. Sykes, your mother? And and here's what I was, um, when I was saying earlier that we don't know whether Athena is the killer, I don't believe Athena is the killer, but you're not going to be able to convince a jury like that. Um, that's the thing about that. And when it comes to your friends, is if you absolutely trust your friends, you should always believe your friends, and you should always have faith in your friends and your um, and your family. Um, so we, we're here to believe in Athena, but it's going to be very hard to, we know that she didn't do it, but it's going to be very hard to uh, convince a jury of that. What kind of research was Dr. Sykes, your mother, doing? Machines that could uh, tell people's emotions by their tone of voice. And my special ability. Someday when people travel distant planets, their companions will be robots. So she said they had to be able to understand how their human companions felt. Wow, robots that can understand people. I was just a, a convenient subject for her research. All she ever did was work. And she never paid any attention to me. Oh, sorry about that. Dredging up all that old stuff. No need to apologize. I guess her home life was... complicated. Oh, by the way, Miss Woods said something about uh, you always wearing headphones. She always wore those big, heavy-looking headphones. She said her mother made them for her as part of her research. I had to wear them every time I went out. Oh, I hated them so much, but she wouldn't listen. What were they for? Oh, she gave me some kind of explanation. But I don't remember now. It was too difficult for a little kid to understand. Okay. Well, let me say this one thing. I don't think your mother only thought of, of you as some handy subject for her research. I... I want to believe that. But just about the only things my mother left me with are widget. And this uh, earring. Oh, it's beautiful. It's made of a piece of real moon rock she ha had for research. 
Maybe she did love me, in her own way. I'm sure of it. I'm really sure she did, because that's uh, what I want to believe, too. Moonrock earring. An earring Dr. Sykes gave to Athena. The stone was cut from a real moonrock that was being used for research. I better ask her a little more about her mother's research. I should show her that paper I found in the, the robotics lab. Uh... Uh, this. Oh! The Ponko series. You must have gone to the robotics lab. You seem to really love Ponko and Clonko. Yeah, my mother made them and I grew up around them, you know? Oh, there's uh, one of those cute little robots in this photo, too. Ah, uh, see Ponko's bandages? I put those on her. I just wound them around and around. Pretty bad job, huh? But I really put all... Uh, put my all into it. Wait a second. That Those bandages. Hold on a second. Yeah, look at the bandages. I've seen that before. Yeah, the bandages on the arm. On the Ponko, on the Ponko arm right there. See that? That's this, that's this Ponko model right here. I, I recognize it. I knew I saw it somewhere. I hardly left a center in those days, so I didn't have any human friends besides Juni. I didn't really understand the difference uh, between robots and people back then. I thought that if a robot broke, bandaging it would help it get better. What a weirdo I was. It looks like there's something written on those bandages. Yeah, I wrote stuff like, Get well soon, Ponko. But in the end, my mom just put her on the operating table and fixed her in a flash. Oh, that must be the thing I, I made move in the robotics lab. I was so impressed by what my mom did. I even asked her if she would uh, put me on the table and fix me if I ever got hurt. It looked just like magic to me what she could do. A little girl who grew up around robots. He seems to have some good memories of it. Seven years ago. On a different subject. Did you hear about the person holding up the space center? Yes, a little. And this person has even taken hostages. I guess I better spare her the news about Trucy. Well. After some negotiating, we agreed to do a retrial of the case from seven years ago. What? You're kidding me. So that means Prosecutor Blackwell might... Yep, I know he's innocent. I just have to prove it. So wait, did you know him back then? Yes, he used to come visit my mom a lot. Hmm. He studied psychology under her, and would sometimes ask for advice on his legal cases. He was very kind and considerate, and straight as an arrow. Unlike now, where he's more twisted than a basket of snakes. That's why I took the witness stand uh, during his trial seven years ago. Please, you have to listen to me. He didn't kill her. His heart is screaming that he didn't kill her. I was a fool. How could anybody else know what I was talking about? He heard the voice of his heart. You were only 11 then, right? You were very brave just to give testimony. Pearls is right. You did the very best you could at the time. But nothing I said did any good. I was a shaking and scared little girl, small and ineffectual. Even after I went to live with my relatives in Europe, I stayed close up in my shell. So, um, children can testify too, um, uh, but it can be a bit complicated. It depends on the age of, age of the child, and lawyers may actually want, lawyers and prosecutors could actually both attack that. But you're different now. You're always so bright and cheerful. Thanks. That's because one day, I came to realize that I had to fight. I couldn't give up. I exercised hard and I studied hard. I wanted to become the strongest lawyer I could be. Why you became a lawyer. I wanted to save Simon, but I had no idea how. Then I met Mr. Wright, and thanks to him, I realized that if I became a lawyer, I could prove that Simon was innocent. I also realized that psychology could help me do this. I mean, psychology was my mother's specialty. When I studied it, I felt like she was there with me, supporting me. 
It does, doesn't seem like Athena knows. The prosecutor Blackwell is due to be executed tomorrow. I wanted to prove Simon's innocence, uh, personally. I wanted to do it so bad. Even now, I want to fly out of here and, and go save him. Come to think of it, she said something like that during the Themis Legal Academy trial. She mentioned there was somebody she wanted to save. She must have been talking about Prosecutor Blackwell. I heard some prison guards say that you had an interview with Simon. How was he? What did he say? No, I can't tell her. But how can I lie to Athena? He was doing well. He was happy about the possibility of being of proven innocent. He was. I wonder if he smiled, like he used to, back then. I can't prove Prosecutor Blackwell's innocence in this trial. I don't uh, think Athena will ever forgive me. I just have to free him. Failure is not an option here. Oh, I thought you might be here, Mr. Lawyer. We're in trouble. We, we are? W what is it? I couldn't find a single open courtroom. They're all in session. Oh no, but this is an emergency. Hmm. It's very difficult to interrupt the trial once it's underway. Oh, that's the <laughs> Steel Samurai theme. My phone! It's from Trucy. What kind of phone are you using? This is like, this is like, you know, the 2020s at this point. Um... I told you I'd give you one hour. I guess it's time to pick one of the hostages. No, wait! We still have a little more time. Besides, all of the courtrooms are being used right now. Make all the excuses you want, but you won't get more time. Your daughter is first. The poor thing, she's a little too young to die, don't you think? No, don't you dare hurt her. There has to be something I can do. Hmm. The cruelest injustice is about to befall us. No, this can't be happening. Mystic Maya, help us. Wait a minute. Maya? I read somewhere that you were holding a trial in the middle of an exploding courtroom. That must have been really something, although weird is par for the course of you. A courtroom blew up. That's it! There is a courtroom we can use after all. The blown up courtroom? Is that where we're gonna do it? Okay, time's up. Too bad. Any last words you'd like to say to her? Hold it! Aura, please don't uh, add to the crimes you already uh, committed. So you know who I am, do you? It wasn't like I was trying to keep it a secret anyway. We're ready uh, to start the trial. We're gonna use the blown up courtroom. We can hold it in the ruins of courtroom uh, number four. The one blown up by the bomber. Oh, what a wonderful idea, Mr. Nick. But I never would have thought of that. An astonishing trial in an astonishing location. I guess it's only a bit fitting. I'll go get the place ready right away. I didn't exactly pick the place for its astonishing factor. How about it? Are you ready to have your brother's innocence proven? My brother. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Did I forget to mention? It's not Simon you'll be defending. What? Not Prosecutor Blackwell? I indict Athena Sykes. On the charge of murdering her own mother. What? You'll be defending the little princess there. The one behind the glass. What? See you in that mountain of rubble you've chosen for our courtroom, Mr. Wright. What is she talking about, Athena? Of course. Why didn't it ever occur to me before? If Prosecutor Blackwell is, is innocent, somebody else has to have been the true culprit. Did I? Did I kill my own mother? I've never seen her like this. No, no. No. What the hell? Oh my god, it's a bunch of Cyclops. No way. It can't be true. Mr. Nick, what's the matter? I see. 
I see five black Cyclops. I've seen these kinds of locks before. Dark black locks protecting a secret hidden deep inside a person's heart. And there's uh, no way to remove them. Well, this case is definitely going to have a lot of twists. And I wonder who the killer is. Uh, but I guess we will wrap it up here, guys. Thank you guys for watching. So we're going to be doing the craziest case yet. And um, uh, is the reason this case rated M because of the, the, the fact that the murder is so bloody? Is that, is that why? If it's not that, don't spoil it for me. Um, I guess I'll, fig I'll figure it out why it's rated M. But, uh, but anyways, um, we'll leave it off here. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys on the next one. Take care, everyone. Have a wonderful day, guys.